Hey everyone, I'm your host, Courtney Massey. And I'm your host, Valerie David, and this is the night session. <laughs> we <laughs> I love when you do that. <laughs> I just I love when she does that. It's just the most seductive thing and it's amazing. <laughs> So we have a lot that we want to cover this week. And in fact, the night session was only going to record every few weeks. But we had so much to talk about. And your response to us was so great on Twitter that we decided to record another one tonight. So thank you for that. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you to these three people who told me that I had a sexy voice. <laughs> and uh, we did also have one woman who said that we put the bacon in her breakfast. Oh, yes. I, I did love that. That was yeah. good. Which, you know, somehow probably had to be an allusion to cock, I think. I... <laughs> there's yeah, a pork, I mean. There's a pork theme. I like it. <laughs> Who doesn't? So, so thank you, everybody, for your feedback. Please send us more. Tell us how awesome we are. It, it helps <laughs> us work. <laughs> yes, we, we love that. We love that. It's better than just talking to ourselves. Exactly. So definitely keep talking to us. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Actually, um, before we get into our scheduled topics, um, I caught this article on the Daily Mail about Gregor Dimitrov. And for, for the fans that listened to us last week, um, we were talking about how Gregor is using his Instagram to make himself into a heartthrob. Um, and the Daily Mail wrote an article about his Instagram and all his smoldering poses. <laughs> and it's funny. I'll scroll down a little bit here. Um, there was this part right here. Uh, I didn't catch this back in 2013, but they included this quote from, from that time where they asked him how he feels about being a sex symbol. And he replied, do I really have any other option? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right? When so, you're this awesome, you know. Yeah, it's what just else, like... What else is going to happen? If the glove fits, I mean, <laughs> and, uh, and they also added in the article that ball girls have admitted whispering good luck as they hand him the balls, which oh. they're not supposed to do. No, no, so, you're supposed to be impartial. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, he's Gregor Dimitrov, heartthrob, oh, and, we, and we told you first. Yes, we told like, they stole our idea. Yeah, before Daily Mail, it was us first. All right. So we'll start with our first scheduled uh, segment, which is Bitch, You Better Work, <laughs> brought to you by a very early, like, 2000 Britney Spears in Teen Beat, uh, which I think is awesome. I love so <laughs> Wimbledon did a series of clips with players where they did mock job interviews um, for the position of 2015 Wimbledon champion. And I thought these were pretty cute. And I saw Andy Murray and Roger Federer's clips earlier this week. And before doing this webcast, I went ahead and binge watched all the ones I can find. And I think Valerie did that too <laughs> before yeah. we came out here. Yeah. So we're just going to talk about them. And uh, so last episode, uh, we talked about Andy Murray's comedic ability. And I think he showcases it again here. The highlight was the part where he asked him, they asked him to describe himself in three words and he said boring unfunny and miserable in his usual dry delivery <laughs> which he's just so funny and i just i can't i can't get enough of him i want him to do so as much comedy stuff as he possibly can so yeah, I, I was just gonna say i love the fact that he's embraced the criticism of him that everyone that doesn't yeah. know him or doesn't understand him is always the, oh, he's so boring. Why isn't he ever happy? Why doesn't he smile? Blah, blah, blah. And they completely miss the, like, scathing humor that is in, like, 90% of everything he says. Yeah, he's he's really embraced it, and he's just, it's made him funnier. Yes. And I feel like now, in the last year or so, he's become so open yeah, and and I think he mentioned this recently. Where I, I think I read an interview. I can't remember where it was, and I'm just thinking of it now. But where he said how he used to care what people thought of him. Where did I? That wasn't in this interview, was it? it you know what? I think it was because he, he was got it? actually like really serious at the end and was yeah, talking and, about stress he, oh, and things like yes, that. Yes, when 
Oh, yeah, it was the stress one. I was like, I know I saw it recently, but I couldn't remember which one it was. Uh, gosh, that, that was a mental moment on my part. But uh, it's the same interview we're talking about. Uh, he talks about how he used to care so much about what people thought of him and, and worried about his image and stuff. And now he's just Andy. Right. And he's let that go. And that's, you know, a lot of stress off, off of him and... That's funny that that's this interview that we're talking about. I completely blanked on it. That's what uh, happens when you binge watch. And, yeah, because you know, I like, watched it. Yeah. I watched it, like, because we were supposed to record last night. So I, I watched it, like, yesterday. And now I just forgot. Uh, so, yeah. So other videos included Roger Federer, who, when asked what his weakness is for this year's Wimbledon, he said, I'm old. <laughs> And he had to think about it for a while because it's like, you know, really, what weaknesses do I have? I'm so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roger Federer. I'm Roger Federer. And I'm so <laughs> crap. I am old. <laughs> I am old. And then Rafa Nadal, oh, Rafa, he, on the other hand, was not prepared for this interview. No. no. He, he didn't have an answer for a majority of the questions. Yes. And at the end of the interview, they asked him why they should give him the champion position. And he laughed and said, you don't have to. <laughs> yes. Well, we didn't because he, <laughs> he didn't make it to the second week. So he didn't get the job. But I think based off of this job interview, he wasn't going to get the job anyway. No. <laughs> but, I mean, he looked adorable doing it. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th that was... Very Neat. It was like the ultimate in humbleness. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it was very sweet. You do the job if you don't want to. Yeah, and he's very bad at talking about himself. Like he's always yeah. like, ask other people. You know, don't yeah. ask me. So he's he he didn't really rock the job interview type of situation. Now Serena Williams was prepared to do well in the in her interview. Yes, and I thought it was funny. She started her interview. When they asked her her occupation, she said she was a professional tennis player, but also a professional dancer in her own mind. <laughs> and but the best part was she she also said she doesn't handle stressful situations with grace, and she kind of started laughing at herself. And I think yeah. we are all well aware yeah. that she doesn't handle stressful situations well. No. <laughs> And, and, you know, I've, I've always been sort of critical of Serena in the past for her attitude and how she handles everything. But I think now that I'm getting older and experiencing, like, new kinds of stress levels, <laughs> I'm starting to be more lenient with her and, like, thinking, like, yeah, you're a badass. You, you do your thing, girl. Like, you do you. Yeah, that, it's funny because I remember that Andy Murray said that before he had won a slam that a lot of the commentators... Um, that were former tennis players were always very critical of him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, that that's fine. They know tennis, but when you're 144 in the world, you don't have any clue about the level of stress, you know, that I have playing on the main courts, you know, <laughs> everyone in England expecting you to win, uh, you know, and it was like, and he didn't say it like meanly, but, you yeah. know, it was a little bit of a, a jab, like, you know, really, you know, you you don't know anything what I'm going through. It's like you're mm -hmm. you're judging me, but you have never been at this epic level of stress and expectation, and so it's like it's easy to say, you know, sitting in your little booth, how you know he should be more calm or you know handle stuff better. But it's like go down on the court and be in his shoes. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a difference. And speaking of scared. Uh, <laughs> Petra looked petrified. <laughs> see, see what I did there? All right, I'm going to play this. And if you guys pay attention to the look on her face, <laughs> she, looks, she was very cute and very sweet. But yeah. it was it, her face expression was hilarious because I she know. just looked like she was so scared. Yeah, the eyes were just like absolute terror. Like, like, oh my God, will I, I, you know, will I not get the job? <laughs> what are they gonna ask me? <laughs> so, and then the next one is, I think, the best one or the most interesting to talk about is Maria Sharapova. <laughs> and I'll start playing this for everybody. So, 
Look, I don't know if Maria didn't really understand what they were doing or if she was trying to be funny, but it just didn't work because she came off a little, I don't want to say snobby, but she reminded me of like Alicia Silverstone and Clueless, like mm -hmm. as if, whatever. Yeah. And like, I like Maria and everything, but it was, it was a little odd a little bit. Like, I, I think sometimes she has trouble connecting, but at the end, they ask why they should give her this position, and she responded, I'm not sure why I applied. <laughs> yeah, I. it was weird. I think it was a combination of I think she didn't really get what they were going for, and then she was trying to make it funny. Yeah, I felt like she was trying to be funny, and th there was a point in there where she kind of said that it was a weird interview. Yes. Like, she wasn't expecting it. So I think she was trying to be funny, but it just didn't come off funny. Yeah, and then when they had, I wish I, I should have written down what she said, what her three words to describe her were. because One was funny. Like, well, one was funny, and then it was like, I like to have a good time or something like that. And yeah. I'm like, these are not the words anyone would use to describe <laughs> Maria. You know, everyone always thinks she's like the ice queen and she I has know. a sense and, of humor. And, and I, I feel bad. Because I think she does try to be fun, but it right. just doesn't come off like it. Like when people have resting bitch face, yes. like they're not really a grim, you know, unhappy person, but it's just their face. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Roger's uh, coach and the Davis Cup captain, Sev, has that. He's always got that bitch please look on his face no matter what's going on, which is just hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, Maria is, yeah, I think maybe in her mind, maybe she thought she was just being hysterical, and then it just didn't translate. <laughs> we'll and, never know. Yeah, we, we won't. And then the next one is Laura Robson, and she's one of my favorite people in the tennis world. I want her to be my best friend. <laughs> and. She, she's always just really cute and adorable. And you know what? She reminds me of Clara from Doctor Who. Yeah. So if there's any like fellow nerds listening to this, I think they have <laughs> like similar accents and they're both so bubbly and infectious. And yeah. I just want to hang out with both of them. And I just really want that to happen. So also she should be in Doctor Who. Like, she could play, like, Clara's, like, long-lost sister or something. <laughs> and, like, awesome. like some timey-wimey thing. We can make it work. That's right. Like, it could I be, mean. you know, she could be a young Clara. She could be anything. Like, it's Doctor Who. But I think <laughs> I think she should be in there because I think both of them together would be super cute. So that's that just be. that's just how I feel. Yeah, and I, I felt bad for some of these players because they were asking them, you know, how many titles and stuff, and they're going, um, none? Zero? Yeah, and that I was kind of awkward. Heather Watson handled that well because she said something like, no Wimbledon title currently. Yeah, she was, she was very smooth. And then Roger misunderstood her question. Yes. Because Roger, they asked how many titles, and he said whatever Wimbledon titles he has, and then he, she goes, other titles, and he said one Wimbledon Juniors title. I don't know. He said something else. What did yeah, he say? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was one Wimbledon Juniors title. Yeah, that's what, what other Wimbledon titles do you have? <laughs> yeah, like he was just. It was such a weird response. Well, Stan's response to that was funny too about other titles. He like paused for a minute. And then he said, two grand slam. <laughs> yeah, I think they, he, they kind of, that confused them a little bit. Yeah. And yeah, like other people who did this, as we mentioned, uh, no, well, Novak Djokovic did it too, but he didn't really say anything that was like that funny or interesting. Oh, I think I missed Norway's. I didn't catch that one. It was, it was, it was more serious than you'd expect it to be. And, you know, we mentioned Heather Watson, of course, Valerie's, boyfriend Stan Favrinka and he talked about strawberries most of the time. I was obsessed with strawberries. And I didn't understand what he was saying at first. I'm not sure he did either. I thought he was saying sorbet. Uh, and then she started saying strawberries, so I was like, oh he's saying strawberries? 
yes, that's the Stan accent. Sometimes yeah. I have to listen to it twice. And and what's funny is a lot of times you, you think you know exactly what he said, and then you go back and listen to it again, and you go, oh, <laughs> that's completely yeah. the opposite of what I heard the first time. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but he was very, yeah, he said it wasn't one of his skills was, like, making strawberries or something. He that's said what, something I thought really he said, strange. That's why I thought he said sorbet. Uh, and then, I don't, I don't know what he said. I couldn't, I couldn't make it out. So maybe someone who is better at us than understanding accents could tell us. Yeah, the Swiss French expert can can fill us in. Yeah, yeah, because that that was a tough one. So yeah, if if any of you haven't seen them, you can see all those videos on Wimbledon's official YouTube account. And um, last week, Valerie was kind enough to put direct links right into her blog of everything that we talked about. So you can also keep an eye out on her site. Oh no, uh, I'll be doing that again. Okay. <laughs> That was too much work. I mean, All right, so she's not doing that, so you're on your own. <laughs> Just, yeah, find you're on, it yourself. You're on your own, Jeez. assholes. We've done enough. Exactly. Give me a break. We've done enough. Oh, okay, so this is good. Uh, another uh, comedic uh, tidbit about Andy Murray is BuzzFeed recently published an article about Andy Murray's reactions he could use for every situation. I thought this was pretty entertaining, and you could already hear Valerie giggling because I'm just like waiting we, for it. Like, we'll show the next I, one. <laughs> we we kind of uh, we kind of prep these webcasts. So I was showing her this last night, and I was reading her some of them, and she was dying. So I'm gonna read <laughs> off some for you. First one: When you open the fridge on a hot day, when you're at a party and your ex shows up. And I think this next <laughs> one's Valerie's favorite. When you're cleaning up your pet's poop and accidentally get some on your hands. When you open the door of a port on the third day of a festival. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, is it gluten-free? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, when you make eye contact with your mate across the dance floor and you see that they've pulled. That what? they've pulled. This must be uh, British. Yeah, yeah, I think that's British. Well, they also said port loo Yeah. And we say porta potties in America. Yes, Wait, what does pulled mean in British um, speak? Um, you, you, you get with a girl. You've gotten a girl. You pick a pickup. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. wait. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Mate as in friend across the dance floor and you see that they've All right. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's funny is I should know this because I'm obsessed with British comedy and I'm constantly watching like British panel shows and stuff. So you yeah. think I would be better, but I've never heard pulled. That was new. Yeah, uh, Dom Monahan from Lord of the Rings used to say that a lot. So uh -huh. it depends on which guys you're listening to. <laughs> he's he's very cute. So yeah. I sh I should know that. <laughs> Not so sure about that one. When you see the words free bar on an invite. <laughs> Open to, oh, take yeah, out it's, food. Yeah, yeah it's take out food. I do know takeaways. We see we I, need to translate this. We, <laughs> when, you're, when you're walking to drunk and see an open McDonald's, how about that? I just Americanized that shit there right there. Go. There you go. Big Macs, man. When you see a tagged Instagram pic of your friends hanging out without you. Aww. When someone leaves crumbs in the butter. <laughs> oh my god, I personally despise that. <laughs> in cream uh, too. Same problem. <laughs> the horror. The horror. When you've been avoiding Game of Thrones spoilers on Twitter, <laughs> then see one on Facebook. Which is funny because Jon Snow was at Wimbledon recently. Oh, that's right, he was. Yeah. When a guy bends down in front of you and you see his hairy bum crack. <laughs> all right, so th there's a lot more. I'm not going to go through all of them. Yes, we don't, because, we don't want to yeah. have all my laughter out at the beginning of the <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll end it at bum crack uh, bum crack. because... <laughs> That, that it's it's a good segment to leave off on. Uh, so yeah, so everybody go check out BuzzFeed for the rest of them. It's pretty funny, as Valerie can tell you. All right, next I'll let Valerie take over this one. Oh, 
We're going from bum crack to cock. <laughs> uh, it's the Aussie boys. Two dicks and a cock. <laughs> um, the Australian boys were quite a bit in the news this week, um, especially for being kind of labeled as troublemakers. And uh, here's a picture of Kyrios, who was so interested in seeing Kakanakis and Hewitt doubles that he decided to climb up on the wall to uh, watch them. And uh, what was that apparently he got told by two stewards uh, to get down, and not just for safety issue, but also because he, of course, popped up right in the middle of the backboard where the players are playing <laughs> with his hot pink Beats headphones on, not distracting at all. <laughs> so um, this was kind of one of the mildest things that um, he got in the news for. In his matches, he was, got really volatile. He got into it with the umpires. Um, there was one point where he supposedly called Mo uh, dirty scum, which they did like an investigation on, and he claimed he was saying it about himself. That, that, that's anybody not... that's watched him on the court, <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> but that's not the worst thing I've ever heard a tennis player say to an umpire. No, but it's not great. You it's know, not great, but, but it's, I mean, Roddick... Yes. I mean, Serena. I think most people have, have called umpire names and been way worse. Yeah, well, and a lot of times they do it in another language, so we're not aware of what they're saying. So there's that, too. But, um... Yeah, he also, another thing was he threw his racket down in a rage, and uh, it he threw it so hard that it bounced up over the back wall and into the audience, which technically could have gotten defaulted for. Yeah, that's a no-no. Uh, they do not like that. Yeah, because it and it, you could tell when you watched the video, all the people were shocked. They weren't expecting this racket to come flying at them, so it's not good if there's potential for somebody to get hurt. It's one of those things where it's not intentional, but you got to try to curb the anger a little bit. Yeah, um, I think. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I was, I was just gonna say that. Uh, there's another thing that his brother uh, has been going around on Twitter and trying to solve all of his problems for him. And anybody that attacks Nick, his brother goes after them. And his big <laughs> thing that he was saying was that the way Nick is on the court is not who he is as a person, and so he shouldn't be judged that this is just like a total separate thing. Well, I, in a way, I think that's similar to Ernest Gulbis where he's, I mean, he's an intensive guy on and off the court, but he's yeah. definitely much less intense off court and right. in day-to-day -day life, unless he, he's pissed off about something. But typically, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, especially Dominic would say, you know, he's not that aggressive off, off court. So, so I can, yeah. I can kind of get that. Right, and that you know, and the the counter to that is that, well, sadly, most people, this is the only time they're going to see you. Yeah. So they are going to judge you. By what they see. By what they're what what they see, and it it was kind of funny because I had just realized I watched some of those some of the videos where the the Kia Drive videos and stuff with Curios, and he can actually be really like low key and super polite. <laughs> and, and and you're like, who is this kid? You know, and then you start mm -hmm. thinking, well, it's all a lot of stuff is just like a lot of bluster because it's the same thing we were talking about with all the stress that they have and expectations. Because mm -hmm. like every kid now that wins a match is the, their country is the next big thing and then they start putting them on magazine covers and, you know, talking about it, you know, because they, they won a third round match in a slam or something. So then... All of a sudden, they have all this pressure on them, and then they feel like they have to live up to it. And yeah. I, I kind of feel like sometimes Curios has a lot of the swagger and stuff as to just, you know, kind of cover up any insecurity mm -hmm. or what he's not feeling good about. It's like, this is what the people want, you know, so I'm going to give it to them. Yeah, and I think people are really critical of Curios, and I've seen it a lot. And I mean, I'm not saying he's perfect or everything he does, you know, is great, but I think he has such an amazing presence. Like when he walks on court and he's got his Beats headphones on and, you know, his hair, he has this look 
that's just so captivating and like you want to watch him and i think you know having these kind of characters and having just people that walk on court you go whoa right. like he's a rock star i think that's good for the sport yes and you know i encourage it so i think you know as long as he doesn't get in too much trouble and you know i can kind of deal with an attitude problem every now and then and you know, right. but I, I do, I just, I love his presence. I think he's just, just, just to watch him walk in. You're just like, whoa, like it's like a catwalk. Right. And like, I'm too sexy is playing in the background. <laughs> or probably something cooler, because it's curious. Probably some cool rap song, but you know. Yeah, it is a funny thing. It's like, if you go to a tournament and you walk past courts, there are a lot of times when you look and you go, who is that? You know, and you kind of have to look for like five minutes and try to figure <laughs> out who's playing. Yeah. And then other times you can catch somebody out of the corner of your eye and you know exactly who it is. Yeah. Because I always say that um, Federer glows when you <laughs> see him on court in person. And it's like, because it's weird. It's just like, it, there's just this presence that your eye just goes right to him. And that's like what you're saying about Nick. It's like we don't have a lot of that, right? It's like Roger, Rafa, and then everybody else is kind of, eh, you know, sometimes they have presence, sometimes they don't. But you're, it's like you said, it's like as soon as he walks out on court, it's like, who is this guy? You know, what, what's he going to do next? Yeah, so, like you, you take notice, and that's important. Yeah, and I think a lot, I was thinking too, is the perception between like older people and younger people because they had Madison Keys on ESPN because she played doubles with Nick. Mm -hmm. And all of the, you know, journalists at the desk were like, you know, curious as they've been talking about him this whole tournament. He's kind of been stirring up trouble and saying bad stuff to the umpires. And what was it like playing doubles with him? <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, did he try to kill you? You know, like, <laughs> that's how they were, like, all, like, what was it like hanging out with this demon seed, you know? Oh, my goodness. And Madison kind of looked at them, and she went, he was awesome. This was, like, the best doubles match I've ever played. We had a great time. <laughs> and yeah. she was looking at them like they had three heads, you know, like, why are you talking like this? It's, he's, you know, awesome, he's fun, he's great. We had a good time, I mean. They, they, because I said he has a running monologue when he plays. He says stuff about himself, about what's going on. And somebody said that during the doubles match that he got into trouble. He, like, I think he lost the ball in the in the sun or something, and he was going, "Madison, help me, help me!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I mean, that's cute. Yeah, that's so cute. So he is. You know, he is definitely entertaining, and I think most of the time he's harmless. He's just a kid, you know. Yeah, um, and I think people forget that. I think, you know, these guys are coming up, they're learning. You know, they're learning everything, and, and you know, they're not going to be as refined as some. Right. And, and I don't want them to be. You know, I kind of want to them to be shitheads sometimes because i think <laughs> it's, it's funny it gives us shit to talk about well yeah that's for sure um you know it gives journalists stuff to talk about fans are talking about them you know they get out there in in uh regular media where you know maybe tennis fans aren't right and, right. and bringing them in right you know, like, what's the, what's this tennis player making trouble? What's this tennis player confusing umpires and vampires? vampires. Like, you know, <laughs> it's it's good to kind of have that kind of personality where you're like, wait, wh what's this? No, exactly. So, and um, the, the only problem with is, um, you know, you still have to be a little bit careful about what you're doing, and he's still feeling some of that out. So there was this little dust up on Twitter, um, which um, Katie uh, responded to a retweet about you know some of Curios's antics with the umpire and stuff, and said it's great to have characters in tennis, but you got to be careful not to cross the line between character and asshole. And she wasn't paying attention and didn't realize that Nick was still tagged in the in her reply. And Kyrgios replied and said, big call from a no one, LOL. 
which then kind of started this whole torrent of people then laying into him about, well, you just crossed the line into asshole by, you know, <laughs> yeah. if this person is, you're a no one on Twitter, how dare you speak to me in this manner, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Damn peasants. Damn peasants. And Thanks. so he, you know, got all these right. And a lot of people were saying, oh, my God, of all the people on Twitter that do say shit about you, Katie it really isn't one of them. <laughs> this was just like a general comment she was making and actually didn't mean to make it to you. And so he actually deleted his reply. But the damage, of course, is already done because everyone on Twitter saves everything with... Well, yeah, action. now we're talking about it. So, and here sorry, we are curious. talking about it. So sorry, Nikki, but... Um, this is kind of an example of it's like it's tough. You have to kind of find that balance between being interesting, being a character, and being shitty about stuff, you know, and carrying it too far. Yeah, and I mean, we all have bad days. Yes. We're, we're all going to have our moods. Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm losing my voice. Um, so I think people need to keep that in mind that we all have our bad days and we're all human. Yes. And, uh, you know, and just try your best and try not to be a dick all the time. <laughs> and, and probably just shouldn't read his Twitter mentions for a while because I, if you actually look sometimes at the tweets that players receive, oh gosh, I hate it. I don't want to look. Amazing. Yeah, it's like you would you would be lashing out at everybody if you got yeah. tweets like this. I, I mean, people say horrendous things. I know. I'm always very disgusted about that. And I remember the worst thing I ever read was someone telling Andy Murray that he should have died in the Dunblane Massacre. <gasps> oh, my God. And that, I just, I felt so sick to my stomach after I read that. And, and I mean, just really disgusting things. And I'm always very against... Um, saying negative things to players on Twitter because they get it so much and and right. I don't need to do that you know and right. I, I mean I guess unless they said something you know I really bad that deserved it um, that deserved a backlash but it, right. in general I think it's just ridiculous and, and gets way out of hand and unnecessary especially from betters that are like betting on these players and then oh, they lose yeah. money and oh, then they yeah. get all in an uproar. It's like it's called gambling for a reason, man. Yes. Like, yes, you win some, you lose some. Like, calm down. Yes, absolutely. And and I think a lot of times people who say really horrendous stuff have no thought of who they're tweeting as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just oh, everybody tags the player and stuff, and you know, and so they just put their handle in any horrendous tweet that they come up with, and it's like sometimes I'd be in a thread and someone will add the player into it, and it's like oh my god, all that stuff I just said, I don't want them to see that. <laughs> this yeah. Is for you know us to be talking about, and the player doesn't need to see all this crap. They have enough to deal with. So, yeah, I. It, it it I can see sometimes where it's like maybe if you've gotten a hundred really snide tweets that if you got something like this that seemed to be accusing you of being an asshole, I could see how you would lash out about it. So Yeah, I mean I completely get it. Um but I think it's best not to engage. Um you on know on the player side, you Yeah, mean? on the player side. Because I think it, it makes it worse for you in the long run. Yeah, I think um, only if you can say something funny, you know, because sometimes some players will come up with something that's hilarious where they just kind of laugh it off. Yeah, and, but... And in case, like, Kyrgios tried to do that, but it really came off as seriously uncool. You know, because Stan, yeah. used, Stan used to tweet some of the horrible people and say, I love you too, and <laughs> with, like, huh. little pissy faces and stuff. <laughs> it's just, it's, like, so ridiculous. <laughs> but on the other hand, then people would get upset because they're like, you're encouraging, you know, horrible people. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I get mad when I see tennis players only respond to the haters. Yeah. And don't respond to people that say really nice and lovely things to them. Because I'm always very nice and respectful to players on Twitter. I'm very encouraging and loving. It's like, yeah, sometimes I would like a little attention back. You know, That's that would true. be nice. And then these people are just being disgusting and they get attention and it's not cool. Yeah. Yeah. Give us the love. Yeah, give us the love. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's Kyrios. That's that's Aussie boy number one. And now we're on to Tomek, which is a super complicated issue. Yeah, definitely. I, I think probably only people who are directly involved know the entire story. But this is Tomek in his last press conference said all kinds of horrendous things about Tennis Australia that um, that they had, you know, cut off giving him money. Um, they uh, were incompetent. Um, that they were just giving Pat Rafter a salary, and he didn't know what he was doing. And just this whole stream of things about being upset about everything. And one of his uh, issues, especially, was that the last time he had practiced. Uh, uh, at Pat Rafter Stadium was that they made him pay for court time and his own tennis balls. And it was, you know, it was, wasn't the money, it was the principle of the thing. It's, it's disrespectful. And um, Tennis Australia's response was to kick him off the Davis Cup team and basically say that if you say anything bad about us in public, we will punish you for it. And they admitted that making him pay for the court and balls was because of things he and his father had said about Tennis Australia, and that if you're going to talk bad about us, then we're not going to give you anything. So <laughs> it kind of sounds like a petty 12-year-old argument when you like it you boil it down to the basics, but when you're saying that you know they've already given Tomic a million dollars, you know, and now his family is mad that they're not giving his sister money, you know, and that they're not giving, letting him play for free and all this kind of stuff. It, it's like, I, I said, you probably need to really be in there and know exactly what the truth is. But it, it sounds kind of insidious when it's like, you know, we told him he can come to us privately with his concerns. But if he says anything publicly and, you know, tries to air anything out, then we're just going to cut him off. Yeah, that's... <laughs> It's like someone has to be the grown up here and no one wants to be. Right. And it's 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 such a weird battle because I don't think either of them are really right. And I think especially yeah. Tennis Australia is really wrong on this. And you know, I don't know, it's just weird because I think Tomic could have handled it better. Yes. And been more professional while voicing his concerns. But I think his concerns are definitely valid and sh should be able to speak about what he feels is wrong. But I mean, the whole thing is just a mess. Yeah. And it, and it just, it got so ugly and it's like, you know, it's probably going to continue on. And I mean, anybody that's followed anything about Tomic, there's all kinds of disasters with his family and his yeah. father is extremely volatile and, you know, aggressive and, so it's like there could be all kinds of stuff going on behind the scenes that it's like, well, you know, crap, I wouldn't give them any more money or either. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near them. So it's like yeah. I'm sure there's all different levels to this, but it was, you know, it's another one of those things where it's like anything that Tomic does, you know, we're ready to – here's another thing where, you know, he's a dick. <laughs> like I said, it's like – Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's tough because – it's it's just a mess like any way you look at it you're yeah. just like this is awful this is no silver lining anywhere here no. right now no it's just it's crazy so that's that that's our first two Aussie boys and then we have Mr. Squeaky Clean <laughs> the cock who we've returned to who like He's, look yeah, his look how face. cute he is! I'm sorry. I just I love this. He just his face looks so cute. I know, and his little polka dot shirt too. And I like that he's going up to like 20 people, and he has these little pizzas, which it's like I can tell these people aren't from Chicago because those are personal pizzas. I know those are single <laughs> serving pizzas. It's like, what are the rest of you gonna eat? We're so American. I know. <laughs> like, look, we would eat that whole pizza and like. A blink of an eye, like yeah, exactly. It's like, what are you gonna have? I, and then watching this video, I was laughing because Kakanakas could totally be on our podcast because 
he's showing them the pizzas. You know, this one's got olives on it, and this one's for those of you who like a little bit of sausage. <laughs> and then he starts, you know, like laughing all embarrassed, and and then later on in the video, they have him putting up a tent with some of the people that are waiting in the queue, as you can see here. And of course, this caused my husband JD to say, "So the cock is pitching a tent." <laughs> <laughs> your your husband just gets it. Oh I my know. god, <laughs> he's like totally there, and so. Cocky's putting up this tent, and he's going, well, this is a big rod. <laughs> so it's just like, here's sweet little Kakanakis, and he's making all kinds of suggestive comments. Uh, you know he's not that sweet. Oh, I know. you know, it was so funny, because before all this curious umpire drama, all this kind of stuff, I was watching stuff, and I'm going, you know, I think what's eventually going to come out is that Curios is actually, like, the nice, low-key one, and Kakanakis is going to be the one that's going to get into all the trouble. Because <laughs> oh, he no. just has that sweet little, yeah. sweet, like, oh, who, me? You know, yeah. and then meanwhile, you know, he's, like, He's a dirty, dirty boy. I don't know. I mean, that was, he played at Winnetka last year in a Challenger event. And they put video up online of him taking one of the golf courts and, like, driving it into a tree. <laughs> so, um. I mean, there's, like, there's, I'm waiting for weird things to happen with Kakanakis. But right now he's he's riding the I'm the, I'm the sweet, good Aussie boy. Yeah, and it's funny because earlier I asked you how old he was. Because uh, I knew he was young, and I was like, he's legal, right? We're allowed to talk about this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is what I always wait. It's like a lot of times people send me pictures, and they go, here's this boy in the Challenger events and stuff, and I go, wait a minute. No, nope, too young, too young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not going to say anything about it. Okay, Gotta we... wait. <laughs> we'll get in trouble, man. Yeah, I don't want any legal action. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, oh. The next one. Oh, <laughs> our artistic nudes. And I just want to point out that Valerie made this, and it's amazing. <laughs> like she did this so well. Yes, and see, this was this was my original thought about when they were talking about the ESPN Beauty issue was that I wanted to thank the whoever was the PR person that got Stan to do this issue because in every interview he said that you know they I had to think about it for months and they but they told me that it was going to be about the body for sport you know it's going to be about the sport and you know the the you know work that we put in to you know get our our body and stuff. it's going to be you know artistic and and tasteful <laughs> and stuff it's you know it's not going to be sexual kind of thing was what the implication was and it's like yeah, okay. <laughs> and I mean, the ESPN body issue is more tasteful. I mean, it's not going to be Playgirl or whatever. Um, but my problem with it then was that I was, like, excited about the fact that he was going to do it. But then the way that they went for we're going to be artistic ruined it a little bit for me. And... Oh no! The the thing that I, the thing that I noticed from doing that that original title page was that when I cut Stan out of this disgusting putrid brown background, <laughs> I thought he actually looked a lot better. Because <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe in the magazine it might look better because you know, uh, computer screen and glossy magazine have a different look. So maybe when it actually comes out in print, it's going to look a little better. But I have no idea who chose this background color. Because it's just like flesh on pseudo sick flesh color. I, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I, I wanted to say too, my first artistic impression of this is Stan has a banging bod. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should be an art critic. That's uh, a natural art critic thing to say. Exactly. That's the first thing. You know, the waist to ass ratio is, is, to is ass. awesome. <laughs> That's my favorite thing you ever said. The waist to ass <laughs> ratio is just on point. Yeah, on point. <laughs> this is great. But the, my problem with 
this photo is Courtney and I, we, you know, we do the run through and we were talking about this and I came to this conclusion that there's a difference between people who are fans of Stan and then other people who are just going, ooh, naked man. <laughs> because the Stan fans actually love Stan for who he is. And so we love <laughs> his sense of humor and his expressions and everything. And this photo is kind of like they took his face from a still photo and then stuck it on an action shot because it's like when he actually plays tennis this is not the face that he has this is the cute little face he has when he plays tennis that I love this is like one of my favorite pictures of him because he always has kind of like a a hint of a smile when he's playing. It's like <laughs> when you watch him running for the ball, it's like he, there's like a little bit of joy in it. And so when they did this shot with him, you know, hitting the forehand, it's like, oh, it's so elegant and, you know, he's got this weird placid face and it's like <laughs> it's closer to the face that we as fans know as, oh shit, I'm in trouble, I don't know how to play tennis anymore. <laughs> it's like hard for us to find that erotic. But it's like if you if you don't look at that, then you're like, oh, his ass is fine. So <laughs> put a put a bag on his head. Yeah, which is like horrible. It's like oh, just cover up his face. Which is, but I said I feel like that photo looks like it was spliced together. And if it wasn't, yeah. then to me that that still means you you did something wrong. If it looks like it was yeah. photoshopped and it wasn't. But that's it's a shame that this is something that fans get really excited for and his fans were disappointed in the end. Rear end. <laughs> yeah. it. We were not we were not The end is me. rear. The end is rear. <laughs> and it's like it feels so terrible because it's like, you know, you know, Stan's probably all excited about what are people gonna think about it? I think he's probably gonna get a lot of new fans because like yeah, I said, the app is fine. Um, but for his actual fans, it's like, I said, it's like we know him as a person and he's always kind of witty and a little sly. And when they did the ESPN interview, they had a, a clip from his press conference where one of the per people asked him about how long it took him to make the decision and he said it took months it was a really big decision and the woman said enormous <laughs> and Stan said well maybe we'll see in the pictures <laughs> oh wow <laughs> he's, he's getting sultry look at that he's, exactly. he's, he's teasing so, he's teasing so like so that's like that's the stand we know and love and so it's like you, we were kind of like hoping there was going to be some picture with him like you know some dick tease <laughs> yes yeah exactly you know honestly it would have been like him with you know the tennis racket in front of his privates or something with like this how about, on his how face. About it's his, like you know how about his penis holding up the tennis bag <laughs> yeah, exactly it's like you just like expected like something silly and fun and like suggestible well, actually like even like the title page I did if they had had him playing tennis and, like in the middle of the field or something you know it's like there needed to be something more fun and instead <laughs> I think because of what Stan wanted because he was very self-conscious about I'm not a guy mm -hmm. that's you know show off and I want it to be artistic and this was the other thing because there's another picture of Stan that's the backhand shot and people once again this looks beautiful I do like this picture better he's framed by a nice color his ass looks fantastic <laughs> but this is the way Stan usually does a backhand it's an open yeah backhand. and this looks and like this, he's skiing I don't I, yeah it's more I said it's more like how Federer does a backhand which then is like super upsetting to me because it's always <laughs> like Federer's never <laughs> Never out of the picture somehow we have to be reminded of Federer. And it's occasionally like he's in the right place on the court because occasionally if he does a backhand volley, he, the arms do swing back more. But it was another one of those things where if you're a stand fan, you're looking at this and going, oh, my God, gorgeous ass, and then why is his arms like that? <laughs> like, yeah, it, you know, it's kind of off-putting a little bit. Yeah, because it just it doesn't look right. But if his one arm was down more, it would be fine. But I think because it's yeah. so outward, you're just like, is that sexy though? Like I know it's not supposed to be sexy. 
supposed to be artistic. It's supposed to but, be artistic. I mean, yeah, it's a little weird. And and this this one was a little better too because I said another thing that people like about Stan is that Stan is like power and aggressive and you know just awesome. And you know there's, there's these pictures like, oh, he's pretty. Look, he's dancing across the screen. And this one was better because like you can see the muscles in his leg and the ass is all pumped up and. The ass his, is pumped up. The ass is pumped up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's not in shadow like the first picture. It was like, what the hell is that? You finally give us the ass and then it's in shadow. So this one was better, but it's like when you see that open backhand that he usually does, if they had shot him from the rear with the arms spread out, like how awesome of a shot would that have been? Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, so it's like... I felt so bad because I'm like, is there something wrong with me? I'm getting to see Stan naked, and I'm like, but wait a minute. <laughs> but other Stan fans I saw, there was a lot of people saying the same kind of things, like, this doesn't look right, and there's something that's just off about it. And I think that that's... ESPN's done this with other things, too, with these kind of shoots, is they try so hard to be perfect that the person becomes, like, not real. Yeah. And, and so for fans of that person, it's kind of like you're not actually looking at them, and so then it's not as, you know, exciting as you had wanted it to be. It's kind of like some strange rendering of them. And one, yeah. of, the, one of the things I had put in my notes was that it reminded me of the, the uh, dolls in Penny Dreadful that the witch makes up of people <laughs> where it looks enough like them to be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> That's but not a good not thing bad. when when your man gets naked and you think a penny dreadful. Of the, <laughs> the, the, the I know. Lit. I know, and it's like I love you, Stan. Your body is amazing. But it's like but, I think Caroline Wozniacki. I think she did a bathing suit uh, shoot, and she was so photoshopped, it didn't look like her anymore. Yes, that was also bad. Yeah, and, it didn't even look like her at all. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of the photos like weren't flattering. They looked kind of awkward. And <laughs> Carol's very shapely, and a lot of the pictures made her look like just straight up and down. And I'm like, yeah, like she didn't have any this? figure whatsoever. Yeah, I'm like, who the hell is this photographer? Are you insane? And <laughs> then that, and a lot of people were, you know, that same thing. Like Carol fans were going, I, you know, I don't actually like them. And and then they released the video of the photo shoot and people were taking screen caps of when she was posing and stuff and those screen caps were 10 times more gorgeous than the finalized photos because it was yeah. you know a natural smile or you know natural mm -hmm. movement and it's like i said sometimes i think these people think they're artists and they get so caught up in staging these photos that they think it's great and the people that know the the players or sports people are going, well, this, you know, this isn't what we wanted. It's, it's not right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we definitely. Like flaws. We, we like personality. Yeah, we like them as people. We don't yes. want these weird airbrushed alien people. Yes. We're attracted to humans. Go figure. Yeah, what a crazy idea. Crazy so, concepts. Those, those were my artistic thoughts on Stan. <laughs> This was uh, just uh, brought to my attention today that, you know, apparently some of the players are jealous of Stan's fine ass. <laughs> so here's Noli. <laughs> and I don't know where Stan's looking, but that's... <laughs> Maybe Noli's showing him what he should have done in the photo. I don't... <laughs> you should have posed like this, man. And that was... Oh, that was actually... Um, um, Pam uh, had, a, had a tweet uh, that on ESPN that she was saying she hoped it was a uh, that Stan had done an open stance forehand. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, awesome. <laughs> Sometimes the commentators are just like us. <laughs> um, oh yes, here is, uh, here is Stanley with his new underwear deal that we talked about last week. Um, he's already showing off the goods. Um, making his sponsors happy, making sure that you can see their name completely <laughs> with a little hint of ab. So, and he looks like he's enjoying his underwear. <laughs> he's feeling good. 
So it was very nicely done. Very good marketing. <laughs> All right. Next we have. Oh, I love uh, this. We have. I want to wake up to this, you guys. Like. This is my dream of waking up and my goofy boyfriend in his underwear and chef hat making me breakfast. Like, that's that's what I dream of. I know. It's just absolutely awesome. And uh, Blaj is known for this. He loves posting ice bath pictures, <laughs> hospital bed pictures, naked in the locker room pictures. So he's, if you want to follow somebody interesting on Twitter... He is your man. Um, and he also, he has a YouTube channel that he hasn't put anything up in a while, but there are some really cute videos on there. So I have, to, I I do, have to look at those. Yeah, when I do do my post, I will put in the link for, for Blage, So <laughs> You said doo-doo. <laughs> definitely after midnight. <laughs> It is, you know what's funny is I used to hate that. One of my friends used to do that all the time. And I used to hate it. But as soon as I heard you say it, I'm like, I feel like I have to now. It's okay. I'm looking at Waj and his undies. So I'm, I'm I am too, good. but yeah. That's amazing. All right. Continuing also, on. not to not to be outdone by Stan. Uh oh. it, he also bared all for Cosmopolitan. And uh, Thomas is someone who he often takes it off for photo shoots. So mm -hmm. there isn't anything new or shocking here. We, I think we've all seen most of his body. Um, no, and, it, and notice the ass is not in shadow. So Stan, remember <laughs> this for next time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and you know what? Personally, I am more attracted to Thomas than I am Stan. So for, for, for me, this, this is pleasant. Uh, and you know what? He, <laughs> he, he's always done interesting photo shoots. And he's getting married to his beautiful model fiance, Esther. And they've done photo shoots together, including this one, which I have to bring this back. I just have to. Um, because I remember when this first came out and fans weren't really sure how to react. Yeah. And like it's very Fifty Shades of Grey, and it's like, <laughs> um, I mean, this is hot, but maybe we shouldn't be watching this. Like, yeah. maybe we should leave the room because he's about to dominate the ever living shit out of her. <laughs> and and we're, and we're not sure if she likes it because yeah, that's not exactly a passion filled face. You yeah, know, I don't know. You know what? Some girls are really into the choking thing. I am not. If no. you choke me, I will fight you. <laughs> I will fight for my life. I will kick you and claw you. Like you can put your neck on or your neck. You can put my <laughs> you can put your hand on my neck. That's fine, but don't squeeze me. Like if you choke me, I will hurt you and it will ruin any sexy time that you imagined. <laughs> um but yeah, like I had to bring this back. It was for Elle magazine. Right there. And like but yeah, it's confusing. Like it's kind of hot, but at the same time, I'm like, I should probably leave now because <laughs> things are about to go down, and I shouldn't be here. Yeah, I, uh, I don't want to know. That's like behind closed doors. Stuff. Yeah, it's really intimate, right? Like, it's, yeah, it's just like I don't know if I should be seeing this. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm we're, too young to look at this. I'm right? too young for this. I'm too innocent. But yeah, so we're going from butts to bromances. Bromance. This is so awesome. Jack and Vashi are like the cutest bromance ever. Wimbledon doubles winners. And they tweet <laughs> each other all the time with positive encouragement and lots of use of the word bro. And Jack <laughs> tweeted this after Vashi had a big win. And everyone just went crazy because it's just so epic. People were asking if it was a movie poster. <laughs> there was obviously a lot of care went into this picture. And it's like kind of insane, slightly erotic, <laughs> and then just like awesome. <laughs> and it's, yeah, so, it's, it's, well, I was going to say, I didn't see this until you brought it to my attention. And now, like, I'm kind of obsessed with it. Like, I want it on T-shirts and pillows and blankets. I want a flag. 
Like, we need to put this image on every kind of merchandise imaginable. It's just yes. that good. Yes. <laughs> on lunch boxes. Like, this would, <laughs> see, like, this is the flag we should worship. That's right. Especially, That's like, I live near the Canadian border. So, like, that should be go. the flag that we worship, the coming <laughs> together. The pop sockle. <laughs> <laughs> the pop sockle. <laughs> so they are just so adorable. And um, they are playing doubles again, including even though Jack has a fractured finger. I saw and, that. Yeah, he tweeted that he's, he's still going to do it for his bro. He's, for he's, <laughs> he's had a rough <laughs> year, man. He has. I don't know. These American boys are so breakable. It's just like... You know, hips, knees, ankles, fingers. It's like, what are you boys doing? And <laughs> head, not drinking enough milk. Head, yeah, shoulder, knees, and toes. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Too much Chipotle, not enough vitamin D, guys. <laughs> they need to start slipping these vitamins in their Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <sighs> so that's the, that's the Vashi sock drama. Yep. All right. Next segment... Is what I call, aw, that's cute. <laughs> Which is featuring my little boy Harpo, who's not this little anymore. He's he's an adult now. Uh, but that is one of my favorite pictures, because he's very cute. Anyway, in this segment, I wanted to, to highlight some of the adorable things floating around social media that combine some of my favorite things, cute people and puppies. And first up, Juan Monaco. Pico. Who is wearing a pugs not drugs t-shirt and i think he looks really cute yeah. like as soon as i saw it i was just like oh my gosh so and i kind of have a story about juan monaco and when i first met him in cincinnati and now like i thought juan was cute but i was never crazy about him like he was okay but i wasn't like all up in him you know? <laughs> So I was in the autograph area and I asked him to sign a big tennis ball that I had and he was looking down at the ball and just glanced his eyes up at me and smiled really big as he finished his autograph. And you guys, like, I swear to God, that might be the most seductive moment of my life. Oh my like the way he did it, I just hit me. And like, I, I just... I, I, from that moment on, I was like, okay, you got to watch that one. You don't yeah. think, you don't think anything of it. And then the next thing, who knows what position you'd find yourself in. You'd be like <laughs> Burdich and Esther over there all of a sudden. <laughs> like, so it just, if you're ever around him, keep your guard up. And, and you know what? It's funny because it blows my mind how apparently, this was a long time ago, that Juan Monaco's ex-girlfriend left him for Michael Buble. Oh my god. And like, Michael Buble, like he's known for getting women all hot and bothered with his music, including yeah. myself. Yeah. But do not underestimate the sex appeal of Juan Monaco. Yes. Yeah, do funny. not do it. <laughs> I'm telling I, you. I <sighs> actually have a funny Juan Monaco story, too. Do you? That, that Please he, share. That, that he's not... He, He's the subject of it. Um, I was at a practice of his and Stan's, and Pico was, of course, shirtless, looking amazing. And there was this group of women next to me, and they were like, do you know who this player is? And I said, uh, that's Juan Monaco. And the one woman was watching him, and she goes, oh, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> You are so beautiful. Oh, I love that. I love you. <laughs> oh, Juan. <laughs> and then she looked over at Stan and she said, why doesn't he have his shirt off? I mean, look, he's all sweaty. Surely he would feel better if he took his shirt off. <laughs> was this in Cincy? This was in Cincy. And they you know were I, just all excited. You know, you know how I know that it was in Cincy? Because that happens every year. Like, Sarah's like the horniest woman, but not at Boodles. Boodles wins. Yeah, Boodles wins. Boodles, like, well, Cincinnati's all talk. Boodles is action. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I was at Brat Safin's practice, and he was shirtless, and I kind of just made it face, like, or I kind of, like, said, wow, or I made a noise, and she goes, right? <laughs> like, this woman I never met just, like, turned yeah. to me. It was just like, yeah. 
that's <laughs> happening. You know, and yeah. it's just, I've had these moments so many times at Cincinnati that I knew exactly where this happened at. Yes, and they were like all excited because I knew who everybody was. And, and they said, do other players practice shirtless? And I said, you got to go see Tommy Haas. Probably about 100% <laughs> he'll be shirtless <laughs> at some point. Because he usually sweats through like three shirts in 20 minutes. So eventually he runs out. <laughs> eventually he runs out. <laughs> so they were all excited. They thought I was like this like awesome prophet telling them all the best things that could happen to them at Cincy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my, so now every time we see Monaco, it's, oh, Juan. <laughs> oh, Juan. Oh, Juan. No, like seriously, the look he gave me. I believe like, it. I just, it hit me. Like, I didn't expect it because I wasn't, like, I liked him, but like I said, I wasn't that into him. And the way he just looked up at me all of a sudden. <laughs> and, like, cause he was bending down for the ball because, I, I don't know, he was tall and I was far down. I don't know. But just the way he did it was just so incredibly sexual and, like, just, like, seductive. And I just thought, I've never had a moment in my life like this. <laughs> and it was just like I didn't know what to do. Like I just everybody needs a one moment. Tonight. Yeah, everyone needs a one. <laughs> All right. So next we have Andy Murray again with Rusty. <laughs> How cute he is! And Rusty giving him lots of kisses. And I just think this is adorable. And. <laughs> You know what? I actually have a story again with this. Uh, I have a, I have four Afghan hound dogs, and one of them is a little girl named Zara, who is obsessed with boys. She's completely men crazy. <laughs> well, she used to watch a lot of tennis with me, and I started to notice she would pay extra attention during Andy Murray's matches, and it became clear she had a crush on him. And, like, you could say, Andy Murray's on TV, and she'd come running in the room and go up to the TV. And uh, she doesn't do that anymore because, like, I kept tricking her. Oh, like, no. Like, I was a real bitch about that, so oh, she doesn't no. do that anymore. But oh, anyway, cool. one day I gave her a pillow for her birthday that had a pocket you can put a picture in. And I put in a picture of Andy and Jamie Murray. And one day I came home and she had completely ripped Jamie out of the picture. <laughs> she had only wanted Andy. <laughs> Poor Jamie. Don't, don't, no one tell him because he gets enough crap. Because like on Twitter, his mom's always complimenting Andy. Yes. And Jamie's always going, yeah, I'm here too. Yeah, when she called Andy her favorite. Yeah. <laughs> there was a whole dialogue about that. It's yes. like, even in the animal kingdom, <laughs> I still prefer Andy. <laughs> yeah, so, so no no one told Jamie that Zara <laughs> picked Andy over him. But oh my gosh, and just before we recorded this, just before we came on here, I saw a video, and I didn't have, as you can see, all of my tabs. I didn't have another tab space for this. But there's a video of Andy Murray playing with a bunch of puppies from Wimbledon, and it's the most adorable thing, and then he starts talking about their poop, because one starts, <laughs> one starts going to the bathroom, and he's just like, wow, that's a big poop, that's amazing, <laughs> and then he's trying to figure out if it's a girl or a boy, and he goes, oh, it's a boy, I see its thing, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and like, they're, they're nipping at him, and he's being so cute, and it's just adorable, so um, we'll, we'll definitely post that somewhere so everybody can see it because it's so cute. And I wanted to play it here, but I just I didn't have enough room. Yeah, that's absolutely adorable. And and my favorite thing about it is you can always tell a dog lover because Andy uses the little dog voice when he talks to them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not the voice you use when you talk to people. <laughs> yeah, we all do it. All, anybody who has dogs. Yeah. Anybody can, I have four dogs. And out of the four, there's one named Monaco, who I say Mon Mon. And for some reason, I cannot talk to her normally. So yeah. she always gets the, oh, hello, Mon Mon. How are you today? I don't do that to any of them. Like, I talk, I baby talk to all of them to an extent. But right. she's the only one that gets it 24-7. Just Because <laughs> she has such a tiny little face yeah. that she just, I feel like I have to talk like she's so tiny. <laughs> and she she's probably like this is really annoying. Yeah, but she loves it. She wags her tail, makes me pet her head, and smacks me in the face if I don't. So it's all there good. There you go. It works. 
<laughs> so now we're going to talk about Wimbledon. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the, the, the big news at, at Wimbledon was we had a fire. And and apparently we people thought that there had been two fires in the same day. Whoa, but what? Apparently the first fire was a fire drill. Oh. Which I guess it was a good thing they practiced it because <laughs> a few hours later. <laughs> someone foreshadowed. Like someone's either a gypsy or... <laughs> <laughs> fortune teller on on center court <laughs> yeah like there is going to be a fire here we have to practice this <laughs> i don't know what that accent was but <laughs> it's my gypsy accent gypsy accent <laughs> yeah so it was very confusing because the uh fire department got there and the police and they just luckily the matches were done for the day but there were still uh, like couple thousand people left on site and they evacuated everybody and they weren't telling anybody anything about why they were being evacuated so all of the journalists had to get away from center court from the media center and people were working on their laptops on garbage cans <laughs> it was like all this drama and no one really saw anything so they didn't know if center court was on fire so people were freaking out and uh, this was the next one is one of my favorite tweets about the Wimbledon fire from Troll on Garros. I'd be on fire too if I knew Roger would be inside me the next day. <laughs> so uh, this was just so wrong that it was right. <laughs> I would I would be excited about that too. <laughs> we love you, Roger. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Closing but, them down. Closing them down. So it turned out that center court was not on fire. It was somewhere off of the restaurant adjacent to center court. And it was in what they called their plant room. A plant room? Plant room, which is apparently where they grow their kakushkin. I don't know. <laughs> I love that joke so much. Because I said in, in the last episode that kakushkin sounds like a strand of weed. So I love how we're able to tie that in where the plant room and then it works. The and, I said, and they're playing on grass. So like it all came together. <laughs> that joke came together in such an unexpected way. It's just awesome. Everything is is circular. It all comes back. It so, all comes back around. The so plant, uh, plant room, I'm assuming, is like the engineering electrical room, some, because they said it was a small electrical fire. Oh, I thought it was a room where they kept the plants that they put on the grounds. Uh, I, it, it's, it's unknown. I, I assumed it, was, it had plants. I, but maybe not. Maybe not. I, I, you know, this. we have to get somebody to translate, just like that Andy Murray post. <laughs> oh, yeah. Find out somebody who's pulling in the plant room. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds so dirty. <laughs> He's pulling in the plant room. He's pulling in the plant we room. We know what that means. <laughs> can we can we use that? Like if I ever <laughs> if I ever go to a tournament with you, and like I hook up with someone, which this never happens. This is never gonna happen. But like I'll come over to you and be like, I'm about to pull it in the plant room. <laughs> And you'll know, like, I'm about to get busy with it. Yeah, totally. Totally. You'll be smoking some kakushkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, moving along. Moving along. Oh, this is Stanley did another awesome around the post hot shot. So I thought you said Stan Lee. <laughs> I did. Oh, well, not like, Stan Lee. No, you know? I mean, like, yeah. Stan Lee, the, like, comic <laughs> book the, legend. Not the comic book god. No, no. Stan Lee. Um, yes, he is. He, if he didn't have to thread it between the post and, and the box this time, but if the box had been there, I think he still would have gotten it. So, Stan Lee has still got his awesome repertoire. I, I, we were thinking that because Rafa didn't quite make it that stands filling in for the miracle shots now which I'm okay with but I think Rafa fans are a little bit upset a little bit a little bit he and then he, he should have he should have prepped for his interview it was it all went downhill <laughs> that's right he wasn't fully prepared also, also I love all the old people in the audience that are so thrilled by this <laughs> it's just like yay there was, as like Monty Python, there was much rejoicing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. Uh, yeah. Yay. That's so good. I 
I'm gonna sip my tea. And uh, we can show the the lady's hot shot was from Aga. Yes, I will play that on on match point. And her last match. This ridiculous get this backhand volley that everybody was like, did that go in? <laughs> <laughs> she walks to the net and the match is over and it was like, holy crap, you know, what just happened? So That's the, funny. The, Aga's, Aga's awesome. She's like always good for the highlight reel. And I'm yeah. excited because I said in our last podcast that I thought she was going to do well at Wimbledon, even though it was probably delusional to think so. <laughs> But you're she's, never delusional. She's gotten to the second week, so I'm proud of myself. And she's had three straight set matches, including a 6 0 6 2 over Tom Leonovich. So she's playing really well. But this is kind of what Aga has done in slams lately is she lures you <laughs> into thinking, whoo, this might be it. And then she'll crap out at some unexpected moment. <laughs> So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this time. I'm I'm yes. wanting her to do well. I'm happy she made it to the second week. And uh and I'm, I'm I'm feeling good. But of course she's playing Yelena Yankovic next. So of course, you know, just when I'm excited about you know, my favorites doing well, they always have to play each other. And Yelena took out Petra, the defending champion. Aww. Not that anyone in America would know, because ESPN pretended like that match wasn't going on. Oh! And, and this, is when, this is when you know how things are bad with, for women, is that it was the defending Wimbledon champion playing a former number one. And ESPN was showing Roger Federer explaining the emojis in his latest tweet. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, that was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> really just kind of thumbs up. It's funny because also for you fellow nerds, like uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy has had a few videos where he explains things using emojis. So that's what I thought of when he said that. Oh my gosh, that's funny. So, but uh, there's some exciting ladies matches coming up. And I and I know that the, everybody's been talking about the draw is like severely imbalanced by slam wins, because there's like four slam winners in the top half, and a big goose egg in the bottom half. Wow. And, and of course the bottom half is all the players that I like, <laughs> oh. because I'm a masochist when it comes to the WGA for some reason. <laughs> You're not masochist. <laughs> so I would, all my favorites are going to have to cancel each other out, you know, and then hope to not be beaten by Serena at the end, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and this was kind of an awesome thing. Everybody was joking all day because Monfils Simone was on the schedule kind of unexpectedly. No one realized there was going to be, oh my god, another Monfils Simone match. And they put it on last, which was completely crazy because these guys always drag it out for five sets and it's you know, an agonizingly long five sets, and then we were expecting it to be, like, the next Isner Mahu. And so they decided to put it on center court after those matches were done so that they could close the roof and put the lights on and actually finish the match on the same day that they started it. And the awesome thing about this for fans was because it was an unexpected match and it was late that they let the fans that stayed sit anywhere they wanted. So anybody that stuck around from Monfils Simone got to, you know, sit down in the front, and it was apparently like a super party, exciting atmosphere, and you know how Monfils is. He totally played to the crowd. And they finished it in in five sets, and it it didn't go over. It was, I think, 6-2 in the fifth, so <laughs> Simone won. But it was pretty cool that somebody actually had a good idea about how to not have this match last three days. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty amazing, especially for the fans. That's really cool, especially at a Grand Slam, yes. you know, to, to let everybody sit where they want and have that kind of small time atmosphere in such a big stage is just insane. 
Yes, and so much better for the players because it's so terrible when you watch one of these late matches and there probably still are like a thousand people there, but they're so spread out and they're usually mostly in the back. Yeah. That the, that the players get no sense of atmosphere. They feel like they're just playing to this like dead crowd and so this is really awesome when they let everybody come up front and looks better on camera and Yeah, definitely. Like win win for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so what else in, in Wimbledon this week? We had, you know, Hewitt and Neiman in, which we had talked about last time, um, you know, ha- retiring this year and both getting each other in round one. Um, yeah. And I thought it was a great match. You know, it was five sets and uh, yeah. Neiman came out the winner. And, you know, with Hewitt, there is a lot of support for Hewitt and the Australian players. And he always draws a big fan base. And the thing I really enjoyed about it was how he acknowledges the crowd and their support for him. And I always really love to see that kind of recognition and appreciation for fans. Yeah. I thought that was really sweet that he kept motioning to them and and really showing his appreciation for them. Yeah. And then, I, I sorry, go ahead. Of, I was just going to say, I think most of the Aussie players are like that. Their, their fans are very rambunctious and... Yeah into it and the players love it and you know support them and well that's actually the Kakanakis video too as he went specifically and visited the, the crazy mm-hmm. Aussie fans that are you know always on camera so it is cool it, and, and it helps inspire people to be more interested because if you're giving support to someone and they act like they don't care then you're gonna move on to something else so it, it's kind of it everybody wins when it's that kind of a a joint relationship. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then Niemann went on to to play Djokovic, and yes, uh, a wonderful draw that he had. <laughs> yeah, and that was his final match. But you know what? What? And you know, he said goodbye to center court. And it was very, it was very sweet. But what a way to end! Like he may have lost, but to go out on center court on right. that kind of a stage. Right. I mean, that has to be a beautiful memory, regardless of score, because Niemann, I, I love Niemann, but he's not a player you often see on the big stage. Yes, that's So that true. had to have been nice to play his final match on center court. No, that's absolutely true. Yeah, that's a lot of times you're disappointed in the, in, you know, oh, he got a crummy draw in the second round or whatever, but it's like, would he have been happier if he, you know, because there's a possibility he could have lost to whomever and it would have been on court 18 or 15 or whatever. Yeah, and, and this was, you know, so much more of a grand event. So it's mm-hmm. just, and I think that's the way the players usually look at it. Was you know, I got to play the number one player. I was on center court. You know, people were cheering my good shots. You know, so I, I think that it, it actually turned out to be okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then uh, I think the biggest shock was Rafa. Yes. With, with Dustin Brown winning. And Dustin is pretty much the new it boy right now, naturally, after yes, taking the doll out. And he's everywhere. He was all over, like, the Daily Mail and other news outlets are doing profiles on him, talking about his life and his hot girlfriend and just showcasing, <laughs> like, how made Dustin has it right now. Uh, and he's another one, actually. He's, he's like your Pico. You, you could have a Dustin moment because he's very flirtatious on Twitter. Oh, I have I have seen some some girls get some interesting tweets from him. He's uh he's very real. Um, his post match interview was hilarious. You know, usually after the match you kind of get those. Well, I just tried to play my best tennis. I you know I was nervous, but I did okay. He gave this you know huge stream of consciousness ramble where he talked about like key points in the match and what he was thinking and. <laughs> You know, how he went about what he was doing, and it's like this, you know, this, like, totally engaged, and he never drew breath, and it was awesome, because it was just like, it was like, oh, you asked me a question, I'm going to give you a full and complete answer. (laughs) (laughs) I think the interviewer didn't even know what to do, it was like, oh, I was was expecting, like, three words, and I got 500. (laughs) So uh, I I think he probably won over more fans with that because he was just so engaging to watch and he has a really kind of sexy voice too so I, I enjoy you, that as well. You know I don't know if I've ever heard him speak. 
Uh, it's awesome. It's, I can't remember if I have or not because yeah. I. I believe he's German Jamaican. I believe that's what they yes, said. And it's yes, yes, that's. His... It's a blend of the two accents. Oh kind man, of I need to look that up now because I can't remember if I've ever heard him speak. But I, I follow him on Instagram and I follow him on Twitter and stuff, and he, he he's always you know great to follow, and he seems very nice. Yes. And and like you said, very engaging to fans, and um, he's he's very down to earth. So he he's always very, uh, you know, a lot of people support him naturally because of that. Yeah, and his it was really hilarious when they were doing the um, statistics for the match, and you know he was like he did serve and volley a hundred times or something, <laughs> and you know Rafa was zero. You know they they show where their court position is for returns, and Dustin is like all up in the front part of the court, and um, people were saying that he hit every shot that's ever been invented during the course <laughs> of the match. So, and that's the thing is. Rafa's uh, playing style has always been to track down every ball, and he's has because of injuries and things like that. He's slowed down just enough that sometimes people can get things past him. And on grass, he just doesn't really seem to have his footing, especially in that early week. It's always like if he can get out of when the grass is all fresh and nice, he's got a lot better chance. But the last few years. He always runs into somebody that kind of catches him off balance. So it was kind of weird to to see him looking kind of flustered out there, and you know, not not kind of that usual like fighting bull that we're used to seeing. And of course, then all of the articles are coming out about you know the end is nigh, and you know, Alpha should retire, and like let's not let's not be premature. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, and so the only dramatic. Thing, the only thing that was to kind of not surprising to me, but there was an interview where they asked him kind of, you know, if he thought he would continue playing if his ranking kept dropping, 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 you know? And uh, he said, I, I, I can't lie to you. I'm not sure. So, you know, because a lot of players are like, oh, I just like playing. I'll be out here no matter what. But yeah. I, I think... I think um, Federer has said that at times, too, where it's like he didn't mind if he was, you know, dropped down a little bit because obviously you're going to when you're older. But it's like if you're never going to win anything again and you're going to start being out on court, you know, 15 or whatever, he wasn't going to want to do that anymore either because they've been spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and also with Federer, too, he has a family and, and things yeah, like that. So I think, if, you know, if he's not really going to be at the top, you know, he could, you know, comfortably, you know, just stay home with his family and not have to travel and everything. Exactly. So, and so yeah, that really definitely there. makes sense. Yeah, like he can live comfortably and yeah. back away. And I, I, was, I was laughing because I was talking to J.D. about this the other day, about how Federer is kind of like that ultra pretty girl that, you know, doesn't realize that she gets treated well because she's really pretty. <laughs> because whenever you talk to Federer, he says stuff like, you know, I still love playing, you know, and it's so wonderful at Wimbledon, you know, when I, you know, when you come here, they give you a standing ovation when you come out. It's so nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like he's oblivious to the yeah. fact that, like, like, they do that for you, Roger. Nobody else gets that special treatment. And, you yeah. Know. <laughs> like, all... oh, they give us fruit baskets and we get cars and, and then there's like players that are like really low like we didn't get a car we had a walk here yeah exactly we don't get any food they locked us out of the locker room you know yeah. it's like roger is like oh i got my own locker room private that's so nice <laughs> Yeah, it's like, that's so nice that they do that here. You know, he always frames it in a way that, like, doesn't yeah. everybody have this? I, I got a free sweep. They're just so nice in London, you know? <laughs> like, that's funny. Oh, Roger. And that's what that's what kind of, because, like, a lot of people don't like Roger because they feel, like, you know, ego, arrogance, that kind of stuff, which obviously he does have some of that. But sometimes it's such a naive ego that it just makes me laugh. It's just like he just lives in this beautiful little, you know, sunny world. <laughs> and it's like, I'm so happy and everyone's so nice to me and they just throw money at me. And 
Isn't the world a beautiful place? <laughs> so, and I, um, for Wimbledon too, my other thing was also I said that Kudla for America had a from doable draw. From America? For America. <laughs> um, had a doable draw, and um, it was actually kind of funny because somebody commented after he won the second round. And they had tagged Kudla in it, and I said, well, you know, he must have heard my podcast and felt that he obliged to win so that I wouldn't look bad. And Dennis actually favored it, that tweet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I thought that was cute. And then he went and won his next match. So, um, But he has to play Chillich next. So mm. that's, that's going to be a tough one. So, uh, I mean, I'd Any, like Anything could happen. Anything can happen, but he's hey. the last American boy. In yeah, the but I mean, anything can happen because no one, pre like, I think, who predicted that Chilich would win the U.S. Open? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, anything, I strongly believe anything can happen on court. And exactly. you just never know who's going to be feeling it that day. You just, you don't know. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hopeful. So, do we have anything else, or are we moving on? Uh, I think we're moving on to our last segment. Oh, we're in the tunnel. In the tunnel of love. <laughs> and who's in the tunnel this week, Valerie? Oh, our very, 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 very sexy Richardis Barrancas. Which I, 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 I chose this, the ATP site, because I love this, like, cool, like, kind of sex look he's given in his photo here. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Ricky, as I like to call him, in a Brad Gilbert sort of way. Well, no, I was going to say his, say his name properly. Uh, Richardis. As soon as she said that, I thought of Swiss chard, and I thought, <laughs> oh, I wonder if Brad Gilbert calls him that. <laughs> yeah, we can do Richka, that's another, that's another nickname for him, but I always call him Ricky. Because it's just like so super American. But he went it by is. Richard for a while because I guess... I, I think Darren Cahill called him Ricardo during his match. So I was like, people say all sorts of things. But um, he's Lithuanian and so am I. So that's, of course, yeah. I naturally have to be in love with him. But he is also extremely gorgeous. And uh, he's only five foot nine, So this way he's playing right here, looking frantic, <laughs> is pretty much how he always plays. <laughs> he has to compensate for being little, and he has a huge game. It's like he just goes for winners like crazy, and hits the lines, and hits ridiculously big serves. He, like, just throws his body out there, and it, he's awesome to watch. And it's also awesome to watch like this. We were just talking about pulling. <laughs> Speaking of pulling. Ricky and pulling looking right at me as I took this photo. So that's why it's a favorite one. He's probably like, when I just, go ahead. I was going to say, he's probably like, is she taking a photo of me like fixing my junk right now? <laughs> <laughs> this, this shit's going to end up on internet. <laughs> but he does, he, I think he does it a lot because I'm pretty sure I have pictures of him adjusting himself too yeah he's got, got to keep the boys in order i guess you, you got um, to it's they go wild just like you... just like with women who have big boobs like you got to keep them in place man they that's right <laughs> sometimes things go awry yeah but... they do it's it's awful <laughs> you gotta keep them in ch you gotta keep them tied down man that's right so um this is one of my favorite photos of ricky because it's another one of those that's just a blend of things. It's <laughs> awkward, it's ridiculous, it's weirdly sexual, <laughs> and just awesome. It's like kind of beautiful. I I love it. And you had mentioned that a lot of times there's pictures of this of Nole like this. Yeah, I think Nole Novak does. does this kind of exercise stretch thing. Yeah, they do a lot of stretching. Yeah, it stretches out your back. And I've had a lot of people tell me, they're like, actually, it's awesome. It's really great for your back. And it's like, it, it is, but when someone takes a photo of it, <laughs> yeah, it becomes like, something else. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll climb on top and like see how it helps my back. <laughs> we'll see if that works. I'll uh, let you know. I would like to climb on top as well. Uh. So, <laughs> but yes, the other thing about Ricky too was besides being beautiful, this was for Men's Journal when they did their Young Guns section. So Grigor was in there, Gofan, uh, Milos, I believe, and Ricky. Um, Ricky had a heartbreaker of a match against Chilich, as a matter of fact. He took him to five sets, and I totally thought he was going to win. I was like going berserk. He was playing amazing. It was one of those things where Chilich was playing really well, and Ricky was playing so amazing that he was beating him. He was just hitting winners from everywhere, big serves, and but the problem was was that it was like because Chilich was playing well, anytime Ricky tightened up, Chilich was there to to pick up the pieces, and so he got broken right at the end oh. and lost seven five in the fifth. Oh no! And it was like devastating because it's like. He had. There were like several times where you're like, he could have had it here. He could have had it here. Yeah. And then you know, when he was playing this like miracle tennis, and then this one game, he just not only did he like tighten up and then just hit errors. Chilich hit like three net cord shots that went his way. They like it was like the luck was all on his side. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, you know, Ricky's got this is gonna hurt. Because, you know, it's like so close to this huge win, and then, like, right at the end, it's just snatched away from you. And my only hope is that, because a lot of times he, he wears Yonex, he reminds me of Stan a little bit with that big game, aggressive going for winners all the time, whether they work or not. Um, <laughs> but I'm hoping that this will be like his Djokovic slam match that Stan had that, you know, nearly killed him because losing it was so devastating, but then. He turned it around and went, look how close I got. I'm just as good as these guys. Yeah. He took it as a positive. So I'm hoping that maybe Ricky can find that and uh, and maybe some more big things will happen for him because a lot of people have been waiting for a long time for him to break through because it's like his height puts him at a disadvantage, but as we can see, Ferrer you know, gets, gets really far at his height. Look at Simon. Yeah, Simone. <laughs> so it's like you you can you can do big things as a smaller guy, and he's definitely <laughs> got the power, and that's not a, you know a problem. It's just occasionally I think like some kind of speed wise he gets a little overwhelmed because you know his legs are shorter. Yeah, so. it, it's it's not the size; it's what you do with it. That's right. <laughs> Very valuable lesson. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> So that's our. That's so our welcome, world. Ricky, to welcome. our tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are wrapping up now, and of course, our our own heartthrob is Joey. Joey from the Tennis Nerds. So if you haven't already, definitely go follow him because he's not only beautiful but incredibly tennis smart. Yes. And 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 incredibly forgiving. Oh yes. He apparently made peace with what <laughs> we did to him in the last podcast. Yes, we did not tell him we were going to do that, and we made him our heartthrob and kind of went at him like the old women in boodles. <laughs> and he he took it very well. I think we we weren't sure how he was going to react to it, but he was very positive to us. So he's a good sport. He puts up with a lot. Uh, with with me and Valerie, so he's he's a saint, and yeah. So we, we one one more reason to love him. Yes, we we're very thankful he didn't freak out <laughs> and ban us. Uh, yes, we weren't blocked yet. So yeah, we're restraining like orders. Guys. We didn't get anything. So no, so yeah. So definitely follow him at the Tennis Nerds, and you can follow me at Courtney Mania. I changed it last time I had it wrong. Last time I wrote at Court Mania, which is my Instagram. So now I corrected it. At Courtney Mania is where you can find me. And, of course, Valerie at Tennis Inside Out, um, who's 
very popular and the whole reason we have a fan base to begin with. <laughs> oh, really? You know, when I walk into a room, everyone gives me a standing ovation. It's, it's just, true. Really nice. It's true. She's the fetter of tennis journalists, <laughs> where she thinks like the sun shines out of her own butt. Like that's <laughs> that's just the way life goes in Valerie David's world. Woo! And, and me, I have my serial killer sexy voice and trying to you know flirt with men who you know need to have a thing for creepy girls apparently. That's right. Because I can't sound as seductive as Valerie, so, you know, whatever. But, have, but yeah. I have extra years of practice. Extra years. Yeah, true. I'm, I'm younger, so <laughs> I'm inexperienced and can learn how to be seductive with my voice and not sound like I'm going to murder you in a basement. <laughs> uh, <but> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. To close up, I just want to thank all of you for listening and talking to us on Twitter. We love when you do that, so please keep the comments coming and things like that. We love it. Yes, unless you have something bad to say, and then we don't want to hear about it. Yeah, don't make us cry. Like, don't don't be a dick about it. Yeah, I mean, if you absolutely have to say something, you know, private message it because you know we don't want that out there. Just, just don't make that happen. Yeah, we want everybody to think that everybody thinks we're amazing at all times. That's right. And, you know, wants to make love to our voices <laughs> and puts our faces on their walls like we do Joey. That's right. Yeah, so tell wants, us how hot we are. To, wants to pull us. <laughs> wants to pull us. And get on top. Wants, and... wants to pull. What is it? Pull us in the plant room? Is that what? <laughs> get pulled what? I'm gonna go pull him in the plant room. That's what's gonna happen right Back now. To the music of smoking in the boys' room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, we're 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 a hot mess, but we're adorable, and you guys love us. And I have no idea how long this is. It's probably. But I, too I long. feel like we talked very long, so I'm sorry. We had so much to get through. That's right. Um, Wimby was busy. There was yeah, we, so much happened. So I'm sorry that this went really long, and I hope you will kind of deal with it and enjoy it anyway. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. Deal with it, assholes. We're entertaining you, and you're going to love it, and That's we're going to well. shove that down your throat, and you're going to think we're adorable. So, <laughs> so yes, this and this was also like a really long side-off. <laughs> Uh, most people have probably tuned out by now. I know, we're just like, they're not saying anything. They're just repeating that, they're just repeating stuff at this point. I'm sorry, this is, it's really late. It's like 2.30 in the morning for me. So I'm like, I'm just gone. My brain is mush. So, all right, so we're going to end it. So, Valerie, do you want to say the final goodbye? Um, Goodbye. <laughs> I thought she was going to do it. Thank you. This has been the night session or something. Yes, thank you for joining us. This has been the night session. <laughs>